Sometimes we can get noisy satellite imagery, but there are methods where we can remove the noise from the satellite imagery by, um, by following some steps. If we talk about what kind of noise we might find in satellite imagery, there's two different types. There's systematic, and that might be that, for example, one sensor in a linear array for a pushroom instrument is not calibrated the same way as the others, or we sometimes just get a line dropping out if that, um, if that particular part of the array is not measuring at all. But then sometimes we just get non-systematic or random noise in our data, and that could just be for one individual pixel, where an individual pixel has a much different value, um, not based on what's on the ground, but just um, it's, it's improperly recorded, even though all of the other pixels around it are correct. So if we have this kind of um, issue with one of the, um, with part of the linear array not recording the same as other parts, we might get a pattern that looks like this, where, um, where just basically different things are being recorded at different sorts of brightness values. And this is sometimes called striping because of the characteristic look that it gives to the remote sensing imagery. There's ways of dealing with striping. If, um, if it is just one line of pixels, within a much bigger image. We can deal with this in a couple of different ways. One way is we could just look in this example with the pixel above and below it and take an average value and just fill in this line here with the average value of, it, of the pixels above and below. Take the average and fill it into this gray, this gray uh, row here. Um, another way is we could look at all the values in these columns and see what they typically tend to be. And then we could just fill it in based on that histogram or the distribution of values with what we would expect those values to be. So in this case here, we're looking at all of these rows, what their histograms look like, and because they're so similar from, from row to row, we would expect this row and this row to also look similar. We can see that it doesn't, so we might need to shift over those histograms in order to better match, the, uh, better match what we would expect of the data. And in this way here, we can remove this type of striping where we have good data in these areas here. And then we have these stripes of much darker data that just don't match what we're seeing um, in, the other, in the other portions of this image. This is, this is a systematic kind of noise that just occurs over and over and over again. It's predictable and we can deal with it in a, in a predictable manner. In other cases, however, we just get one, one uh, pixel or bit of data that doesn't have the same value as what we would expect given everything else in this area. This might actually be something true that is measuring on the ground, but sometimes we, um, we just get these type of errors and it can give the um, imagery a real sort of salt and pepper look. And um, we want to get rid of these or we want to normalize them by what we believe to be the data around it. So in this example here, it's something like a uh, low pass filter but it's slightly different than a low pass filter. It doesn't account for the pixel that we think is an error here. So the new value would just basically take this value plus this value plus this value plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this, add it all up, not add in this, take those eight values and then divide it by eight. And in this case here, if we did that, we would come out with a value of eight, which much more closely matches all of the other pixels around it. And in that way, we can get rid of this um, non-systematic or random sort of bit error that we're seeing in our data.